Peace and blessings. This is Raisa Kiwala, the Divorced Muslim Coach. We are on another week of our weekly wisdom episodes every Wednesday here in our group. And today's topic is all about coping with loneliness post-divorce. Um, and one of the biggest myths that um, are centered around how to cope with loneliness that just leads you deeper into a darker abyss or or it, like like picture like this is black hole right so what i want to ask you today is connect to, to you and really ask you is have you ever dealt with the feelings of loneliness that are so painful and that you just want to kill the pain, you want to dull the ache, and numb yourself. And I have found that no matter how much you try to numb yourself, to distract, or to escape the pain, you can't. And that space of uh, vulnerability can lead to self-sabotage. Um, how? By, by uh, coping with harmful methods um, such as, you know, emotional eating, overeating, um, people call it retail therapy, basically, you know, filling that space with buying things to fill that space with things that you don't need, um, keeping yourself busy. Uh, and all of these things that can really, uh, w things that we're trying to do by keeping busy, distracted, really can lead to things that are harmful for us, causing us to self-sabotage, and um, can lead to even behaviors that can be addictive. And that's what I mean by, you know, self-sabotage. And so, you know, and that is one of the biggest myths. One of the biggest myths is all about okay, you know, you're feeling the pain of loneliness. You're feeling this, this emptiness. So just keep busy. You know, so when people ask and they say, well, you know, how are you doing? You're like, oh, I'm keeping busy. I'm, I'm so busy. I'm keeping busy. And that is part of the, the conditioning that we're living in in our times right now. It's part of the disease of busyness, really, that never really solves the problem, does it? Um, it just is an escape to so you don't feel the ache or the pain but it doesn't solve the problem i uh, you know allah SWT tells us in the quran that the reason that we exist is to worship him right him alone and when we fall off that track and we start connecting to and attaching to with our hearts things and people other than Allah, other than the reason that we exist, well, um, we've, we've fallen off track of our purpose, right? Uh, the alignment is off. And what happens when your alignment is off in your car? You head off track. You, yeah, you you're off the, the, the path. You're off the direction that you're meant to be in. And, and figuratively, that causes a lot of pain um, it can it causes a lot of agony causes a lot of misery uh, you can also use that relate that in the same example with you know when your alignment is off um, in your car it's gonna be very it's gonna be very painful if you will having to deal with a car that's taking you in the wrong direction hey Halima welcome salam to library at who so you know Allah SWT tells us the reason why we exist and so we know uh, that that's, that's our purpose, right? And when we fall off, and when the heart becomes attached to things and people other than what the heart was created for, uh, then we get distracted or off track, right? We're, we're not fulfilling the reason why you and I exist here. So, uh, and the... Um, you know, a lot of times what happens is that I realized in my own experiences that all of my tests, all of my challenges, what they were doing, it was really 
shedding the unhealthy, I'm, I'm gonna call it toxic, unhealthy, toxic is something poisonous for you, something that is not good for you. Unhealthy, toxic attachments to people and things that we have because attachments were only supposed to be securely rooted and attached to our source, which is Allah, right? So, um, because that is the guiding force or the guiding light that is going to help us stay on the straight path. So, you know, um, and I really think that, I really believe that when we get those tests and those challenges to help cut those attachments, that is an act of pure love. That is an act of sincere and pure love when Allah subhanahu wa does that. Is it painful for us? Yes. It's extremely painful when we lose relationships, when we lose things that we are attached to, right? We go through grief. That's what we call it, right? From that loss. So, um, again, or we're just not paying attention. We've fallen off the fallen off of track um and we're just living this rat race of you know on autopilot not even thinking about what we're doing just chasing 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 this shiny thing chasing this shiny thing we want this we want that right and we again we lose sight of our um of our purpose and um one of the one of the things that we need to fill this emptiness oh subhanallah i just remembered one of the things that I learned from one of my teachers was that we we do have a emptiness or a hollowness. And the way um, uh, Dr. Bilal Ware described it as when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created um, the first man, right? Um, it was just uh, made out of clay. It was an empty, hollow shell. And um, one of the stories was that shaitan, when he you know, was looking at the shell of Prophet Adam. He wasn't a prophet then, but the first man, um, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put his, uh, his ruh into him, before he blew it into him, he was just an empty, hollow shell, right? Empty and hollow. And um, he took a pebble and he threw it um, inside. Um, I, I don't know if it was through his mouth or what. And he heard the clanking noises of the pebble hitting the clay right and he said and he said that oh this this thing is hollow inside right and um if i ever have dominion over it if i ever if, if i am ever given dominion over it i'm going to lead it lead it astray so subhanallah when you think about that like we have an emptiness within us we have a void within us that we're always trying to fill always trying to fill and no matter what we do, it's never satiated, right? And what the heck does this have to do with loneliness? I'm gonna get there. Because we feel like relationships, things, you know, consumption, all of this, when we have this, we'll feel better, we'll feel good, you know, we'll feel full, fulfilled. Um, but that's not the case. That's why we keep chasing all these things or people and we're just, we're not feeling full or satiated, right? Because that void, is only meant to be filled with one thing that is our that is meant to be filled with Allah our connection and our relationship to Allah so it's like putting orange juice inside of a gas tank and expecting it to 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 not dysfunction or malfunction and, and work it's it doesn't work so hi hi yeah. <laughs> so the um, you know Allah subhanahu wa tell, tells us that you know in chapter in Surah 26 um, verse 88 the day you know the day when there will be no benefit to anyone your children your wealth none of those things right except the person who comes to Allah with a sound heart so what are we doing here? We, we're looking for something we need. We're looking for something to dull the ache and the pain of loneliness. We're looking for the wrong things. That's why it's, we're, not, we're not feeling whole, right? Because when we fill the heart with the wrong things, it's, uh, it gets corrupted. Um, and that reminds me of the hadith the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that verily in the, in the body there is a piece of flesh and when it is sound, the entire body is sound and when it is corrupt, the entire body is corrupt. And you think about that, the heart has a physical and a um, spiritual 
component to it. Um, it's in the center of the body and it's the center of how we operate. So um, I want to share with you that once there was a time that I was working with a, a woman who you know, what just came out of an abusive relationship and she just wanted to keep going back to her husband because the pain of loneliness, she couldn't sit with that anymore. Um, she knew what she was saying, but she would rather go back to the pain of abuse than sit with the pain of loneliness. That's how bad it can get. And that is how when we're not aware of how we are trying to cope with it, we do things that are harmful for us, right? Um, so what are those type of harmful things? Like self-sabotage I'm talking about is the loneliness I stop feeling it and enjoy my own company, subhanAllah. Yes, Halima, very true. Um, yeah, the only way to enjoy your own company is to be able to sit with yourself. And that is the problem that I'm talking about here we don't know how to sit with ourselves and our feelings because they can feel really uncomfortable and they can just feel like then and those are the ways that we cope we escape we numb we distract and if you look into yourself i would ask you to look in and see where are you escaping to like what are the things that you are trying to distract yourself with what are the things that you're trying to numb yourself with and i gave some of the examples in the beginning but i'm going to give you another example of i'm seeing this a lot <clears throat> and I, I, with all the women that i'm talking to uh and people who are sharing with me that there's a lot of us in this group who of, of course we're all you know who are divorced and who want to get married again right and the rhetoric out there is that there's no good men out there. There's nobody out there. So what's what's happening is it's very easy to fall into the situation. Well, out of fear, there's no good men. There's nobody out there for me. Am I going to be alone for the rest of my life? Am I going to be, you know, the fears of not having companionship or the fears of, of feeling lonely? Um, and first of all, number one, thinking that a person is going to fill that void. Number two is um, lowering your standards. A lot of the women I'm talking to, because of the fears that they're feeling, they're buying into the fears and they're and you know they're acting on the fears of I better settle or I better lower my standards to accept or bring on anyone who will accept me or take me on. Like kind of was like you know. Um, here you can you can take me you can have me you know who whoever whatever is good enough for me and so those things when you're when you're experiencing those fears we don't want to act on those fears right because that's that's just um, feeling fearful is just indicating your thoughts it's not indicating to you truth and if you act on you know we all know what happens when we act on emotion and, and feelings. It's not, it, it's not a good, sound, wise judgment. What is Halima saying? It's very hard and the distraction is high. I hate it at the beginning and now even if it's very hard, I try my best to do it. Yeah, I mean, all it requires is conscious. Um, you know, that that's the worst part about feeling um, lonely, vulnerable, and then acting on your fears because what's what's going to happen what happens is that when you're in this space of vulnerability desperate thinking that there's no one or nothing out there for you you buy into the fears and then what happens is becomes a self-fulfilled prophecy because you don't want to maybe perhaps experience the same thing over and over again and these are the things that we need to learn about our own self before we get into another relationship so if you haven't worked on your vulnerabilities your insecurities your fears you're going to attract the same thing and it's going to end up in a self-fulfilled prophecy so those are things that we need to look out for and be aware of right so one of the things that i wanted to kind of teach you about today and share with you is that I asked in our group um, for you guys to share with me what's the worst part about um, feeling lonely post-separation, right? And you guys shared a lot of things with me that I wrote down here, which was um, 
one of the one of the things was fear of turning to unhealthy un-islamic coping mechanisms to kill the loneliness that's that's a scary place to be in right because you're out of your consciousness you're just reacting and you're just trying to numb or or um dull the ache right and at the end of the day when we fall into those things we're still accountable and still responsible and we still have to answer for it right um and the other thing was um a lot of times people were saying like it's so difficult to sit with yourself alone with yourself i want to get out of my head i want to get out of my head right because that's where all of the racing thoughts and the thinking the thinking goes on and you can't think your way out of that because if you could you already would uh and that's why it's so important to get support and to get help to understand your own thinking patterns to understand your behavior patterns to understand your coping mechanisms and your insecurities and your vulnerabilities so you don't fall into those things um let's see what else did you share with me uh fears of being alone i talked about that and decreasing your standards i talked about that um coping without um coping with that space that person used to fill for you is no longer being filled so what are you going to fill it with now right that person um who regardless of who they were you know regardless of how your marriage was that person was still filling a space and now that they're no longer filling it you are going to be looking to fill it with something else and that is the test here so we have a choice what are we going to fill it with and when we fill it with the right right things which is our relationship and connection with allah everything else once the foundation is straight everything else gets um gets realigned like i talked about in the beginning right um and that's what i you know what else did you talk about let's see um memories the triggering again the feeling the memories <clears throat> All the things that are coming up in your mind right uh, and the way that you talked about coping with it was busyness you know being on autopilot um, doing some doing like keeping yourself busy like you're doing this activity you're doing that activity talking to this person hanging out with this socializing here socializing there it's not that there's anything wrong with those things but if they're being used as a crutch and a coping mechanism to kill the pain and ache of loneliness it's not going to solve the problem it's just going to take you around and around and around until you keep coming back to the same thing which is filling the void with the right place with the right with the right substance right um and one of the things that i wanted to share with you today is that our heart is the vessel that that not only um the whole body operates with but what our mind operates through the lens um that our thoughts get filtered through into the mind it comes from what is sitting in your heart you know do you have a sound heart do you have a soft heart do you have an open heart do you have a heart that's connected to allah um or are there you know diseases in the heart is there anger is there resentment is there bitterness is there um hatred is there hurt and pain that's filtering all through your thinking in your mind um and so you know part of what i teach in my program is really understanding where our feelings coming from what and, and how it affects our behavior because if we're not recognizing that we're just going to be reacting based on our feelings right let's see what's going on what are you guys saying here it's very hard and the distractions is high thinking someone will come to rescue us now i know i am my own gla gladiator and have to survive yeah exactly because there is nobody coming to rescue you that's your job you went alone right that's how you came that's how you're gonna be here that's how you're gonna go back so that's that's really all that we have um and you know if one of the things that that really stood out to me in the quran was um in chapter 22 verse 46 where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um have they not traveled throughout the earth with hearts to reason with and ears to hear with truly it is not the eyes that become blind but do the hearts blind hearts that means you're not we don't we're not true 
true wisdom and sight comes from our heart, not from our eyes. That's what Allah is telling us. And if you want to know more how to access this type of thinking, this type of wisdom, which each one of you has inside of you, it's exactly what I teach in my program and in my uh, mastermind. It's really all about accessing your birthright, which is your wisdom thinking by being connected to your heart, not by all of the, the racing thoughts and the busy mind that's going on up here with your own human thinking, right? Because when we're attached to the heart, we have access to guidance and divine guidance and wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending to us at all times. It's just that we're not able to see it because we have a busy, cluttered mind. And so what I teach is really something that is a subtractive psychology. It takes things off your mind. It, it, um, it drops and it, you know, like things just fall off, you know, thinking unnecessary, unhelpful, um, thinking just falls off and you feel lighter. You feel more at peace. You feel more content. You're able to access your intuition and your wisdom and and be connected to your your source so if that sounds interesting to you you want to know more let me know oh look who i have here another visitor everyone's coming to visit me today let me know i'm going to drop a link here so you guys can connect with me who do we have here sephora this is sephora Isa. and this is my nephew Isa. hi you came to say hi Okay, let's see what else. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, Sephora. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> let's see, Halima saying, thinking someone will come to the right. Yeah, right? Okay, it's very hard. Yeah, that's the thing, right? How are you able to recognize what are your distractions? Are you leaning towards that or are you... Are you... Um, able to see and recognize and filter through that that um, distraction because sometimes we can't see our own distractions and it, we can't recognize it as a distraction and it just looks like you know justifiable so if you guys have any other questions post them here I'm gonna drop the link so if you want to know more about how to access your own inner wisdom and how to help yourself fill that void in a way where your heart and your mind are connected to the source, let me know. I'm going to uh, drop a link in here that we can connect and we can chat more and I can share more with you about it. And I want to hear your takeaways if you're watching this um, live or if you're watching this later on in the uh, recording, play, the replay. I want to hear your record, your takeaways, okay? Asalaamu Alaikum, Welcome Salaam, Amina, good to see you. All right. Ladies, I'm going to sign off now. Assalamu alaikum.